AI is evolving faster than anyone expected. And this week, things got way too real. A humanoid robot just entered development with plans to be armed with real guns. Not a movie prop, not concept art, a combat-ready machine built for the battlefield. Then there's Unitree's new G1 update, the Kung Fu Kid 5 6.0. It's flipping, kicking, and fighting like a trained martial artist, and it's starting to look almost too human. Figure 03 also launched this month and instantly became one of Time's best inventions of 2025. A home robot that folds clothes, loads the dishwasher, and learns from every mistake. Meanwhile, a new humanoid has emerged that doesn't fear rain, dust, or fire. Built for chaos, designed to survive where no other robot can. Tesla's Optimus showed up at the University of Washington, letting students meet it face to face, a bold move to make robots feel normal. Welcome back guys, Alfie here. From armed humanoids to brain controlled robots, this week proves one thing. AI isn't just advancing anymore, it's becoming real. First up, Foundation Robotics and their Phantom MK1, the humanoid nobody's talking about enough and maybe that's on purpose because what they're building is straight up controversial. C and E T got an exclusive hands-on demo at Foundation's San Francisco headquarters, and the CEO Sankayat Pathak didn't hold back. He flat out confirmed that yes, they're considering arming these robots with guns. Not metaphorically, actual firearms. His exact words were chilling. Their use cases for first line of defense would require arming them with guns, and pretty much all of those things are on the table. Let that sink in. This isn't some vague future possibility. This is active development happening right now. Foundation calls it a dual use strategy, meaning the robot works for both industry and defense. Initially, they pitched Phantom as a bullet sponge, a machine that goes into dangerous zones first so soldiers don't have to. Reconnaissance, clearing landmines, logistics, all reasonable, right? But Pathak took it further in this interview. He's talking about Phantom going to war, literally to the battlefield and eventually Mars. One step at a time, he says, but the roadmap is clear. The robot's built for it too. Phantom MK1 has twice the overall torque throughput of any competitor its size, and Pathak bragged that with its hips, it would be deadly. That's not marketing speak, that's a promise. They're even training it for a USA versus China robot boxing match, which sounds like a PR stunt until you realize it's also a live stress test for combat-grade hardware. CNET's reporter got to teleoperate the thing using a VR headset, and while the experience showcased the potential, walking, punching, controlled movements, it also revealed current limits. The robot's hands got crossed during calibration and needed a full reset, but that's fixable, and Foundation's already iterating. Now let's switch gears to something that's equal parts impressive and slightly absurd. Unitree's G1 Humanoid just dropped the Kung Fu Kid version 6.0 update, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this thing moves like a trained martial artist. High kicks, like head-high front kicks, rapid punch combos, spins, one-legged balance poses, low sweeps, and then it casually throws in consecutive backflips, somersaults, aerial twists, and cartwheels, all in real time. No video speedups, Unitree confirmed that explicitly. 18 months of non-stop training went into this, and the result is a robot that looks borderline supernatural in its fluidity and control. The secret sauce? A new feature called anti-gravity mode that drastically improves stability. In testing, engineers literally Spartan kicked this robot in the chest and back repeatedly, and every single time it either absorbed the hit or fell and got back up in seconds. That's not just balance, that's resilience on a level we haven't seen before in humanoids. During the flips and spins, the G1 actively uses its arms for mid-air stabilization, extending them out to counterbalance just like a human gymnast would. It's whole body coordination at a speed that's frankly unsettling because it's so smooth. Version 6.0 caps off a progression that started way earlier this year with basic kata movements and side flips. The internet went wild over the demo, but not everyone's impressed in the way Unitree hoped. One commenter summed it up perfectly. I just wanted to do my laundry and clean my house. I don't want a killing machine at my home. Another said these demos mean nothing. 
Show me the robot doing useful work without human intervention. And honestly, they've got a point. Backflips are cool, but can it fold a shirt? Can it fetch you a drink? And speaking of recognition, Unitree just landed on Time Magazine's Best Inventions of 2025 list. Not with the G1, but with the R1. This one's a different beast entirely, and Time called it out for being an ultra-agile humanoid aimed at researchers, educators, and developers. Launched in July at a jaw-dropping starting price of $5,900, the R1 weighs around 55 pounds, packs built-in AI with voice recognition and image processing, and has 26 joints that let it box, run, and yes, do cartwheels. Time's recognition wasn't just about the tricks, though. It was about the price disruption. Nearly 6,000 bucks for a bipedal humanoid with this level of agility is unheard of. Compare that to competitors charging six figures, and suddenly Unitree's strategy becomes clear. Flood the developer market with affordable, capable platforms so the ecosystem grows fast. But Unitree wasn't the only robot time honored. Figure 03 also made the list, and this one's targeting your home directly. Titled a household robot, Figure 03 can fold clothes and load a dishwasher, though time was quick to note it still needs help. If it drops something or the dishwasher cycle needs starting, a human has to step in. It's not autonomous yet, but it's closer than anything else on the market. Launched in October, Figure 03 is the result of serious upgrades over the Figure 02. The joints are smaller and stronger, components are 90% cheaper to manufacture, and the hands are slimmer with tactile finger pads plus a palm camera for better object manipulation. It's lighter overall too, designed to be less intimidating in a domestic setting. The company's running a massive data collection drive to train their AI model called Helix. Figures aiming for select homes next year, 2026, but Time's cover feature made it clear this is a long game. Time recognized Figure 03 because it's the first serious push into household humanoids that feels tangible. Not science fiction, not 10 years away, it's here, stumbling through your laundry but learning fast. The promise versus reality tension is real, but the trajectory is undeniable. Now let's talk about a robot built for the environments most humanoids can't survive. Deep Robotics just unveiled the DR02, and this thing is an all-weather industrial beast. IP66 rated, meaning it's fully dust and water resistant. It operates in temperatures from negative 20 to 55 degrees Celsius, handles humidity, rain, and dust without breaking a sweat. Deep Robotics claims it's the world's first humanoid to hit that IP66 standard, and that's a massive deal because most robots fail in real-world conditions. Temperature swings, moisture, particulates, they kill sensitive electronics and motors. The DR02 doesn't care. It's 175 centimeters tall, weighs 65 kilograms. It climbs 20 degree slopes and lifts up to 10 kilograms. The design is modular too. Engineers can swap out arms, legs, major components quickly to minimize downtime during maintenance. This robot isn't for show. It's built for security patrols, industrial inspections, logistics in harsh conditions, places where weather and terrain would sideline other humanoids. Deep Robotics is already crushing it with their Juying quadruped robots used in industrial inspections, and the DR02 extends that rugged reliability into a bipedal form factor. The company's positioning this as a practical tool, not a flashy demo unit, and the specs back that up. Where competitors worry about controlled environments, the DR02 thrives in chaos. Rain-soaked construction sites, scorching factory floors, dusty outdoor facilities. It's designed to work where humans would struggle. And with Chinese companies like Deep Robotics pricing aggressively, the global humanoid race just got a serious contender that's prioritizing durability and real-world deployment over viral stunts. Meanwhile, Tesla's taking a completely different approach with Optimus Gen 2, and it's kind of brilliant. Instead of chasing industrial contracts or military deals, Tesla's putting Optimus in front of people. Lots us of people. The robot recently showed up at the University of Washington, interacting with students, letting them see it up close, building familiarity and excitement. This mirrors what Chinese humanoid companies like Unitree and AGIBOT have been doing for a while. 
getting robots into shopping malls, tourist spots, stadiums, schools. But Tesla's scale and brand recognition amplify the impact. Last October at the We Robot event, Optimus danced, mingled with attendees, and served drinks. In July, it served popcorn at the Tesla Diner. Recently, it performed Kung Fu at the Tron Aries premiere and apparently started making money from appearances. Now it's on campus. The strategy is clear. Normalize humanoid robots in everyday settings so when they eventually roll out commercially, people aren't scared or skeptical, they're ready. Behind the scenes, Tesla's likely using these public appearances to pilot commercialization and gather real-world feedback with the hundreds of Gen 2 units they've already built. It's market testing disguised as PR, and it's smart. By the time Optimus version 3 launches, Tesla will have mountains of interaction data, public sentiment insights, and brand loyalty baked in. The robot becomes less of a machine and more of a character people recognize and root for. It's the kind of long-game thinking Tesla's known for, and while other companies fight over factories and warehouses, Tesla's quietly winning the consumer perception battle. But let's shift gears to something that feels like actual science fiction made real. Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain-computer interface company, just hit a milestone that's genuinely mind-blowing. Nick Ray, an ALS patient and Neuralink's eighth human trial participant, used his Neuralink implant to control a robotic arm and feed himself. ALS took his arm mobility away, but now he's guiding a robotic limb with nothing but his thoughts. Neuralink posted a video of Ray moving the arm to a plate of food, picking up bites, and bringing them to his mouth, all controlled mentally. He tweeted, Life with my BC, I has been so surreal and so rewarding, can't wait to see what comes next. Elon Musk congratulated the team, and the internet collectively lost its mind. This isn't a cursor moving on a screen or typing text. This is fine motor control of a physical object in three-dimensional space, restoring a lost ability to someone who's paralyzed. It's proof that brain-computer interfaces can give people their autonomy back. The device itself is called the Telepathy Implant, or N1 chip. A coin-sized BC, I placed in the motor cortex with up to 1,024 ultra-thin electrode threads picking up neural signals. A wearable transmitter sends those signals via Bluetooth to a processor that decodes intent and moves the robotic arm in real time. Surgical robots insert the electrodes with high precision, and the whole system works seamlessly enough that Ray could perform a task as delicate as feeding himself. Previous Neuralink patients used the chip to control cursors, type on screens, even play Mario Kart with their thoughts. But Ray's achievement is the first demonstration of real-world fine motor tasks with a robot. It's a powerful moment in Neuralink's ongoing PRIME trial. As of October 2025, 12 patients have received the implant with plans to reach about 25 by year's end. Over 10,000 people are on the waiting list, showing massive interest. Only people with paralysis from conditions like ALS or severe spinal injuries qualify for now, but the potential is staggering. Looking ahead, Neuralink's vision gets even wilder. Elon Musk mentioned that future chips might help people with spinal cord injuries walk again by rerouting signals around damaged neurons. Elon Musk has talked about eventual symbiosis with AI, streaming sight or sound into the brain, enabling telepathy, memory uploads, the whole transhumanist dream. Those are long-term goals, but Nick Ray's case is a concrete, undeniable step forward. Brain signals controlling limbs, giving paralyzed people the ability to interact with the physical world again. It's happening now, and it's only going to accelerate. And finally, let's talk about something that ties all of this together. Neura Gym, the world's first physical AI training center for robots. Neura Robotics, a German company, just unveiled this massive facility where hundreds of robots, including humanoids, train by doing real-world tasks. This isn't just simulation. It's a physical gym where robots practice grasping, sorting, assembling, manipulating objects under human teleoperation to record precise trajectories, forces, and sensor feedback. That real-world data gets combined with high-fidelity simulated training to bridge the sim to real gap, the problem where robots trained in virtual environments struggle when they hit the physical world. CEO David Rieger nailed it with this analogy. Learning to swim requires touching the water. Robots learn complex motor skills way faster once they practice in the real gym, 
and the data flows into the Neuroverse, a cloud platform where robots and developers share experiences and skills globally. Here's the genius of it. NeuroGym uses a closed-loop pipeline. Engineers build tasks in detailed simulations, then teleoperate real robots to gather robot-native data, true kinematics, contact forces, tactile and vision readings. AI policies are trained on the combined synthetic and real data sets, then tested back in the gym to find failure modes. New real data gets collected iteratively to close performance gaps, and the cycle repeats, accelerating learning every round. All of that data aggregates into the Neuroverse, an ecosystem where once a skill is mastered by one robot, it can be instantly deployed to any connected machine worldwide. It's a flywheel effect. More data makes every robot smarter, which attracts more partners, which generates more data. Neura's even offering companies access to the gym as a service. You can book space, use their robots and trainers, and tackle specific tasks. The first gym is operational, and they're planning multiple locations globally to increase task diversity and data volume. They've partnered with NVIDIA for Isaac Sim Simulation and set up manufacturing deals in China and India to scale hardware production. The key insight? Robot-native physical data is far more valuable than human proxy data or simulation alone. When robots physically touch and interact with the environment, they learn transferable skills that actually work in diverse real-world settings. Handling laundry, using tools, navigating cluttered spaces, Neura's approach is pioneering because it's the first large-scale physical AI gym for robots, and it demonstrates that real-world practice is the missing ingredient for truly cognitive machines. This is the infrastructure that'll power the next generation of capable, general-purpose robots. And with hundreds of machines training in unison, sharing knowledge through the Neuraverse, the pace of progress is about to explode. So where does all of this leave us? Robots that fight, robots that flip, Robots that survive the elements. Robots that hang out on college campuses. Robots that fold your laundry imperfectly but are learning fast. A paralyzed man feeding himself with his mind. And a global gym where hundreds of robots train together to get smarter. This isn't the future anymore. It's the present, moving faster than most of us can process. And whether that excites you or terrifies you, one thing's certain. AI robots just got too real to ignore.